a kind of prayer. Even the great rishis, when they start undertaking such a great and subtle work, they want to surrender themselves to the Supreme or the Supreme Reality, which they have experienced, but we are trying to experience the higher state of consciousness. Hari, you are a looter. You loot all these names and forms when I wake up to that state of consciousness. Dreamer and the dream are looted away when I wake up. The teachers take this idea because they don't want their little ego to come between you and the truth that he is expounding. He doesn't want his own personal opinion, his own intellectual prejudices to color what he is talking. He is becoming completely empty so that he can expound and explain through this vehicle of the teacher. The teacher is becoming, as it were, an empty reed for him to express through. Again and again we find that they start with a prayerful words or a phrase or a mere repetition of Om. To the great rishis, a word of the Om is sufficient. Because the moment he expounds Om, that state which he has experienced before goes there. And therefore his own personal, individual mind and intellect gets transcended. There is only a vehicle available for the Lord to express, to reveal his knowledge for others. This transcendence of the Lord, not only imminent in you, but he is the external world, the plurality are all nothing but Brahman. But at this moment, I can't recognize it. Even while I am dreaming and drowning in the Pacific Ocean, I am in my dry bed, in my bedroom. All that I am seeing in the dream are all nothing but my waking mind. But while dreaming, in that plane of consciousness, I cannot recognize my true nature as a waker. When the teacher declared that all oh, this is nothing but that one divine, infinite, uh, infinite state of consciousness, the students must have got confused. What is wrong with the teacher? Is he can't see this world of plurality. He says this is all nothing but Brahman. When the teacher said that oh, all this is Brahman, it is not that on April 25th, whatever that you are seeing is Brahman. No. Whatever there were in this world, from the time of its first creation till today, and in the future, whatever names and forms shall ever be, all of them are nothing but that Brahman, which we are going to explore. Help you to realize, isn't it? Standing in the beach, how will you explain to your child, your son, that these, all these waves are the ocean? And better, all the waves that were there in your great-grandpapa's time onwards, all of them were the ocean. <laughs> and even your grandson's time, the waves coming in future are also ocean. In the same way, all names and forms are. Nothing but that Brahman, the one reality. And that what is the other than all the three periods of time, in the past, in the present, and the future, whatever names and forms you are seeing, are all nothing but Brahman. And the timeless, beyond the three, beyond the pure state of time, there wherein a time plays, that also is Om. So Om is all these, all the names and forms that were there, that are now you are perceiving and experiencing, and that all people would be experiencing in future. All of them are, oh, not only these, but the very essence in which these past, present and future are playing about is also, oh.